So now, for question 16, we have the question saying, uh, consider an economy where nominal wages are fixed by long-term contracts, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what to take note is these three points here. Fixed nominal wages, which means sticky wage, flexible prices, unemployment. All right, now the first question is, write down the condition that means firm's demand for labor and show how the short run aggregate supply curve is derived. The, the, this curve is upward sloping. So we need to explain why this curve is upward sloping. So take from a very macro point of view, let's look at one firm, okay? So if a firm hires you, you must produce monetary value for the output per hour, at least of what I pay you per hour. So a simple example is, you make $100 a day, and therefore you must make at least $100 worth of goods for me a day. So simply, it just means marginal product of labor equals to real wage. So now, now we know that marginal product of labor equals to real wage. So marginal product of labor is actually our labor demand curve, which is actually a downward sloping curve. Why? Simple. Because there's diminishing marginal returns to labor. You should know what diminishing marginal returns to labor means. So every every hour you work on top of the first hour you work, you're going to produce less output. And this continues until you are totally tired from work. So we have this graph. Okay, so there is no upward sloping labor supply curve because we assume that labor force is fixed. So at any one point in time, we hold the population constant. So we have this uh, vertical line, vertical dotted line, LF. And then we have our usual labor demand curve. And note that uh, the vertical axis is actually the real wage. So what this means is that we have people willing to supply more labor with the current wage level. This means that unemployment and wage is higher than equilibrium wage because of sticky wage. So whenever price increases, okay, we see a decrease in real wage. So how does, how do we find our SRAS curve? So we need to link it with price and output. So how do you get price and how do you get output? So firstly, a hypothetical scenario is when your price increases, definitely real wage falls because real wage is obtained from nominal wage divided by price. And since we know that they're all in long-term wage contracts, right? So real wage falls. Labor employed increases. So remember, there's a downward sloping curve, right? Demand curve. So when your wage falls, labor employed increases. And thus, output increases. Because when you use more labor, definitely you produce more output. So this is the result of what we get. So when they ask us to explain how do we derive a curve, or getting us to explain what the curve is, we just need to go through a very simple process of deriving, going through from price to output. Okay, second thing is, why will real wage decrease? So remember, labor demand is a derived demand for the output itself, right? So when price of the output increases, people will want to go into that industry. So when more people come into this, this particular industry, definitely, your wages will fall. Now, for 16 part B, so we are considering an economy where the central bank has a policy of inflation targeting, which means they'll try to keep prices constant by changing their money supply. Okay, now we have a situation that there is a negative shock to confidence. So this reduces firms' demand for investment and use the ADAS model to find the impact on output and un unemployment and say whether it is a good policy for the economy. So how do you define a good policy? So perhaps something that reduces the impact of your 
confidence shock. So if let's say it decreases output, we want to have a policy that push output back to where it was previously. So these are the key points that we should note. Okay. Using ADAS model only. Uh, the effect of a confidence shock on output and unemployment. So now, to give a background information of what, what is our inflation targeting, so we normally know that interest rates and inflation rates tend to move in opposite directions. So if inflation is above the target... Thanks for watching a sample of the Quick Economics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realising ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. Simple to understand and captivating, so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realising those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials and exam solutions in the form of videos, which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.